Today we are going to cover the halachic process. So we're going to talk about the 13 principles from Rabbi Ishmael. We're going to cover some of the most popular works like the Mishnah Torah, which we have covered before, the Tur, which many of you might know or might not know, the Shulchan Aruch, which most people do know exists but don't know it in all its details, the Ramah, who he was, and his contribution obviously to the Shulchan Aruch. We're also going to cover the Mishnah Berura, the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch, Igros from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, Yilkot Yosef from Rabbi Vari Yosef. Also going to cover the Shulchan Aruch Arav, which is the one from Chabad. And we're going to start off with the 13 principles of Rabbi Ishmael. So again, this can be found in the Art Scroll Sidur which I will pop a link for below in the description. As on page 48, at the end of the page, it starts, 13 principles of how we extract Jewish law from the Torah. And it is quite complicated. And you do need to study it in a bit of detail, and ideally with a rabbi or with a study partner one-on-one. So it is from the Sifra, which is... Alachik Midrash, meaning it's Jewish law. Rabbi Ishmael says, The Torah is elucidated through 13 principles. 1. Through a conclusion inferred from a lenient law to a strict one, and vice versa. We call this in Hebrew, Kol Vachomer. Kal is easy. Vachomer is uh, strict. And a good example of that would be, we learn in the Torah that a wicked person should be buried immediately if a, such a person receives the death penalty. This person should be buried immediately or as soon as humanly possible. Now, it only says this for a wicked person, but we learn through this principle that if we must bury an evil person immediately, so much more so should we bury a uh, good person immediately. So that's called kol vachomer. And you will hear this a lot. This is a rule that is applied a lot. The next one is number two. Through tradition that similar words in different contexts are meant to clarify each other. So maybe if you've listened to online shirim, online lectures, you'll often hear that the rabbi would say that there's a word in this passage in the Torah And we also find this exact word, in Hebrew obviously, in another passage. And that basically comes to explain the meaning of that word. So I'm not going to read the whole list, but you you get the gist of it. Introduction to the Talmud. So I'll also pop the link below. This is actually how I learned the 13 principles from Rabbi Ishmael where he goes in a lot more detail, and it's obviously in English. So it actually starts on page number 10. So there it is, and then it continues to discuss it for quite a few pages. So definitely something to to look at and to study. The next halachic work, which we're going to talk about, is the Mishnah Torah. It was written by the Rambam about a thousand years ago. And the Rambam was a doctor. He wrote a lot of books. And he's one of the greatest rabbis that ever lived. He was a Sephardic rabbi. The reason he wrote the Mishnah Torah is because he felt that Jews need a concise set of Sephardim, a set of books, where they can quickly look up any halakha. And that is why he lists the 613 mitzvot and then he breaks it down into sections for easier learning. This is by far one of the most authoritative halachic works and you will often hear uh, rabbis online normally quote the Rambam a lot. When he first wrote the Mishnah Torah, Mishnah means second to, so second to the Torah or the second Torah. Obviously just the name was very controversial and uh, people burned his books and people actually actively went against the Rambam for daring to put down the halakha in such a concise form. But eventually he succeeded. Students asked him, you know, Rabbi, people are burning your books and they're going against you. You know, how do you feel about it? So he said, there will come a day when my book will be in every Jewish home. And that is 
almost exactly what it is. I don't think there's any Orthodox Jew that does not have the Mishnah Torah or that does not learn from the Mishnah Torah. It is mainly followed by the Sephardim because Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, Maimonides, the Rambam, was from Spain and he was a Fardic. The Yemenites follow the Mishnah Torah to the point. They do not follow any other halachic work. They do not follow the Shulchan Aruch. And they follow only the Mishnah Torah. The next book we're going to talk about is the Tur. Now, a lot of people don't know a lot about the Tur, but the Tur is essential in how we got to the Shulchan Aruch, which is today the most authoritative halachic work where we look up halachot for daily life and just Jewish law in general. The Tur was written by Rabbi Yaakov ben Asher. So he's also from Spain, also Sephardic, and he lived about 800 years ago. The structure that many people know of the Shulchan Aruch, the way it is set up, comes from the Tur. So the Tur basically started all this work, and you will see that a lot of people that learn the Shulchan Aruch normally refer to the Tur. That's now when you're deeper into your learning. The next one we're going to look at is the Shulchan Aruch. Now the Shulchan Aruch is actually not that old at all in Jewish terms. The Shulchan Aruch is 400 years old. It was compiled by Rabbi Yosef Karo lived in Eretz Israel. He lived in Tzvat. He wanted a concise book that everyone would agree on. So how did he do this? How did he compile the Shulchan Aruch? Basically, what he did is he took three main halachic giants, poskim as we call them, and that was the Rambam, which we already discussed with the Mishnah Torah. 60% of the Shulchan Aruch is actually the opinion of the Rambam. He also took the Rif and the Rosh. Many Orthodox Jews call this the three R's, the Rambam, the Rosh, and the Rif. Two of these rabbis were Sephardic, and one was Askenazi. So we have a little bit of an imbalance there, and that is why the Sephardic world follow the Shulchan Aruch exclusively, and that is their codified book of Jewish law. For Askenazi Jews, there was another rabbi called the Ramah, and the Ramah, actually at the same time that Rabbi Yosef Karo was writing the Shulchan Aruch, he was writing his own book for the Askenazim with a very similar concept. Also taking it from the Tur, everything exactly the same. He was about to finish his book when Rabbi Yosef Karo released his book. And the Ramah, the Askenazi Posek, the Askenazi Rabbi, did something spectacular. He trashed his book and he said, why will I now cre create a book for the Askenazim? And then there will be the Shulchan Aruch for the Sephardim. It would be better for me to comment on every place in the Shulchan Aruch where... The Askenazi opinion differs with the opinion that was chosen in the Shulchan Aruch, which he did. He commented on the entire Shulchan Aruch from Rabbi Yosef Karo, and he added comments at the end where the Askenazi opinion differs from the opinion listed in the Shulchan Aruch. That is why when you study the Shulchan Aruch, that you won't see the Ramah on every single section. So if you don't see a comment by the Ramah, that means this is also the opinion of the Ashkenazi. The only time that the Ramah did not comment is when he didn't disagree with the opinion of the Shulchan Aruch. And that is how the Shulchan Aruch became the codified book of Jewish law. The next work we're going to look at is a very famous work, especially for the Ashkenazi. There is 
almost not a Jewish home without the Mishneh Brura. was written by the Chofetz Chaim. He lived about a hundred years ago and he's from Poland. And because he lived a hundred years ago, he comments on the Shulchan Aruch with a modern take on many of the laws because there was many newer inventions a hundred years ago. He also has Another work, so the Mishnah Berura is more in short form, but if you need more details, then you must go to the Biur Alacha, which is the same author, the Chofetz Chaim, but where he goes into a lot more detail. And the Mishnah Berura is actually available in English. There's an old set that's uh, black with red written on it. That's the set I studied from, and I'll pop the link below. There's also a newer set, which is a blue set, which is very nice. And that set isn't complete yet. Also, everything I'm mentioning now, you can find on the website Safaria, which is totally free. It will be under the Halacha sections. And the next one is the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch. It was by a rabbi called Rabbi Ginsberg. And he wanted to make a set of books that every Jew will have in their home. And I think he greatly succeeded. What makes the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch so good, and that's why I recommend it, is the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch is quite strict. It's got very strict Haredi opinions. But what makes this work so great is it includes the Mish commentary by Mishnah Brura. So it's taking opinions from the Mishnah Brura, from the Chofetz Chaim. And it's also giving notes from Igros Moshe Feinstein, which we are going to cover also in uh, today's class. So definitely something that you, you need to get. The next halachic work, which to my knowledge is not available in English yet, I would be very happy if someone can pop me with a link of a book of Igros, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein of blessed memory. English and Hebrew obviously side by side because that's the way I learn. As, as soon as you drop me the link, I will click and buy. And it's just brilliant. The Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was one of the greatest Poseks that lived in our generation. He was from America and he wrote this Igros, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, about modern halachic problems. Because remember, a lot has changed from the time of the Mishnah Brura, but a lot has changed since then. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, of blessed memory, was a giant in the Ashkenazi world, and all Ashkenazim follow his opinion. He wrote commentary, which we use today to navigate modern day halachic issues, like electricity, for example. Modern day ovens, which the Mishnah Brura covers in great detail, but in his time it's still fire and ash. So it's a little bit difficult to relate since most people don't actually make food that way anymore. The next work that we're going to cover is also a giant who lived in Eretz Israel, Rabbi Ovadia Yosef of blessed memory. He is by far one of the greatest rabbis that ever lived. One of the greatest Poseks that ever lived. He had a memory that you can't believe. He had a radio show in Israel. And people asked him questions and he quoted everything by heart from his mind. That's a different level. His son wrote a halachic work which is called Yilkot Yosef. Which comments on the Shulchan Aruch. Which is the Sephardic codified book of law and gives also modern solutions for modern problems. Rabbi Vodiasev is famous for many things, but one of the things he's the most famous for is for uniting the Sephardic world, together with the Ashkenazi world. He made certain heters, certain decrees, that allow Sephardic and Ashkenazi Jews to eat together without any problems. Since the way we eat meat is slightly different, that is something that he's very famous for. Another thing he's very famous for is for freeing women that are trapped. When a person that is married goes to war, if he dies in battle and his body cannot be found, the woman cannot get divorced because you need two witnesses that have seen the person die or seen the body. Then only can the Baidin free this woman from her ketubah, 
a marriage contract. Only other way a woman can get divorced, the man must hand the woman a get. It's in the Torah. It's actually a positive commandment as well. Or obviously when the husband dies, but then you need witnesses that he's in fact dead. You know, it's Israel. People died in battle. Or soldiers were captured and later passed away. And they are basically trapped. Rabbi Avadi Yosef of Blessed Memory used to investigate these cases. And then he would give a heter as the leading Posek in the Sephardic world. He was also a member of the Knesset, of the parliament. He was a head of the Chas party. Women would come to him and he would free this woman. Many people say by Ruach HaKodesh, by divine inspiration, also by meticulously checking facts that's presented to him and facts on the ground. And there's a famous story in Israel that made a lot of people religious. 75% of Israel are secular. So there was a woman who was a reporter and she wanted to trap Rabbi Ovadi Yosef by declaring her husband dead. But he was actually still alive. He was also a reporter. So they made up a whole story about how he died. And there's no witnesses. And, and Rabbi Vadi Yosef of Blessed Memory struggled with this case for quite a while. And he checked and he couldn't get to an answer. Eventually, the woman came. She was crying. And it was all, already years later. So he made a decree. He freed the woman from a ketubah. And basically made her a widow. But... The husband's still alive, so that would be a big mistake by a giant Posek, which will make the religion look stupid, and especially Rabbi Ovadi Yosef of Blessed Memory look stupid. And that was all aim. She called her husband, you know, this would be the biggest story in Israel. And she phoned her husband, and she couldn't get hold of him. She phoned the office, and the office said, look, maybe come back and we'll talk about it. So she said, no, tell me, I want to speak with my husband. It's, I mean, I've broken the biggest story of my life. Her colleagues told her, look, your husband uh, was hit by a bus and he was dead on impact. And uh, just shows you the power of a Posek. Once he stamps something, Hashem must approve it. It's to defend the Torah. Also, when Rabbi Ovadi Yosef of Blessed Memory passed away, there was over a million people at his funeral. And the last work we're going to cover is the Shulchan Aruch Arav, which is the Shulchan Aruch that the Chabadniks follow. So Chabad is a stream in Hasidut. It's commentary from Chabad on the Shulchan Aruch. There is a little bit of Kabbalah mixed into the Shulchan Aruch, which comes from the Ari. Like I said, Rabbi Yosef Karo lived with the Ari in Tzfat in the north of Israel. So some of the ideas did go through. But often in those cases the Ramah will differ because the Ramah and the Ashkenazi world is not so heavily on Kabbalah. We believe Kabbalah is part of our tradition but we do not believe it's halakha for Lama Zeh, for this world. It could be applicable for Lama Ba, for the world to come. But currently we are here. The Chabad movement, which is Hasidish, they pray according to the Ari, the Arizal, uh, Tehillat Hashem. And a lot of the halakha follows Kabbalah. So that is why Chabad is often a bit controversial because there is a rule in the Ashkenazi world and the Hasidim is a sect from Ashkenazi. You don't find it in the Sephardim. And the Ashkenazi, there is a rule. Whenever there is two opinions between halakha from the Shulchan Aruch and Kabbalah, we go by halakha with the Ramah because we are living in this world. So next week we're going to talk about the hotly debated topic of Midrashi. Oh.